Hi, and welcome to another video from a plain truth um, What I want to do today is a fairly short video explaining uh, how and why uh, Columbia, Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia got its name and what it's a district of. Here we see a famous uh, picture from John Gast in 1872 of Columbia in the Manifest Destiny Westward Movement uh, across from the east to the United States where they had to kill off all the Indians and the buffalo so the white man could have his land. Now, Washington, D.C. was founded in 1871 by the Organic Act of Congress, uh, and this is their emblem or uh, symbol, a District of Columbia. Note the uh, shining hill over the Capitol in the background, the women lower than the man, and the District of Columbia in the background. Here is the original D.C. flag, three stars and two bars. And here is the current District of Columbia flag, um, which Columbia, District of Columbia has, is run by the federal government. We also see in some of the churches in the District of Columbia using the three star and two bar stripe motive. Also in the uh, corporate world, we see uh, CBS using the all seeing eye as their logo in Columbia Pictures and Columbia Pictures using the torch and the sun and the pyramid with the unfinished eye which we also see in the back of the dollar bill. We see the Columbia space shuttle that blew up tragically. Please note the Israeli flag in there as well, equal, equal height, equal weight. And also we see the Rockefellers Columbia University in New York, as well as the Columbia Teachers University, also a Rockefeller Foundation. Now it's interesting also to note that Columbia symbol uses three crowns as well. Um, and here we're back to the John Gast 1872 Manifest Destiny of Miss Columbia leading the way. Okay, so let's go over here to uh, Wikipedia, the font of all knowledge. Um, and Washington District of Columbia, where did the name District of Columbia come from is the question here. And for the past six, eight months or so, I've been offering uh, every friend I talk to and family $100 if they could tell me where the District of Columbia name came from or what it is a district of or why it is named Columbia. So far I've kept $100 as uh, no one has been able to even come close. The common response has been to a person almost, I have no idea. Uh, so we see here the U.S. Constitution provided for a federal district under exclusive jurisdiction, jurisdiction meaning whose business, of the Congress, and the district is therefore not part of any U.S. state. Further down, it's created a single municipal government for the remaining portion of the district. Here it says an estimated population in 2014, and then leave it to Wikipedia, it says it's the 22nd most populous city, uh, but right above here it says it's not part of any U.S. state, so a contradiction right there. Uh, the centers for all three branches of federal government in the United States are in the district and they rule our lives, collect from the IRS and whatnot, including the Congress, the President, and the Supreme Court. Now, if the Congress is the only one overseeing and they are in the District of Columbia in Washington, uh, that means they're not a part of the United States of America, small, uh, big U, small N-I-T-E-D, United States, and I'll get into that in a minute. Washington is home to many national monuments and museums, the uh, city hosts 176 foreign embassies as well as headquarters of many international organizations, trade unions, nonprofit organizations, lobbying groups, and professional associations. Uh, one of the tricks they pull for the National Governors, and Asso Governors of Association that's based in Washington, D.C., is all the governors get together and come to a separate city-state called Washington, D.C., and they make all their rules and laws, and they form their lobbyist groups, and then they put on their governor's hats and go back to the United States of America and they enact their laws in their states. We'll get into that in another time. All right, so I want to click over here and give you how, how uh, District of Columbia, Washington got its name. But first, let's talk about uh, what the act provided. Uh, this was the uh, Organic Act of 1871, an act to provide a government for the District of Columbia. Uh, an act to provide a government for the District of Columbia, also known as the Act of 1871. It means that Congress, under no constitutional authority to do so, created a separate form of government for the District of Columbia, which is a 10 square mile parcel of land, its own city state. 
It has its own police force, its own mayor. It has its own tax. It doesn't, it isn't tax, but it has its own um, constitution uh, that we'll get into at another time. Uh, but basically it's, it's not beholden to any other city state, just like the city of London and just like the Vatican, those the trilateral city states that rule all. Um, why would they do that? Let's look at the circumstances. Well, in 1871, it was a vulnerable time in America. Our nation was essentially bankrupt, weakened, and depleted after the aftermath of the Civil War. It was nothing, Civil War was nothing more than a calculated front for some fancy footwork by corporate backroom players. The Congress realized our country was in dire financial straits, so they cut a deal with the bankers. The Rothschilds of London were dipping their fingers in the pie, uh, incurring debt to bankers. Um, a bank will do anything unless it's will not do anything unless it's entirely in their best interest to do so. So they basically went and created this act with the treasonous uh, Congress complicity, and uh, the uh, what they did in the 1871 it was defaced in the sense of the title was block capitalized and the word for which changed to the word of in the title. So instead of United States for America, it became United States of America, all in capital letters. And it goes on to say here, the United States of America, capital letters, represents a fictitious corporation. Your birth certificate, driver's license, social security number, bank statements are all written in capital letters, which means you have registered, regis means crown, submitted and are applied to a part of the United States of America corporation as a fictitious character. The altered version, the capital letters, the Constitution of the United States of America. It is the corporate constitution. It is not the same document you might think. The corporate constitution operates in an economic capacity to have been used to fool the people into thinking it is the same parchment that governs the republic. It is absolutely not. Capitalization, capitalization is an insignificant change. No, not when it's referring to the context of a legal document. Such minor alterations have made major impacts on each subsequent generation born in this country. What the Congress did with the passage of the act was to create an entirely new document, a constitution for the government of the District of Columbia. The kind of government they created was a corporation. The new altered cor constitution serves as the constitution of a corporation and not that of America. And if you'll remember back in 1999 in the blue dress uh, with Monica Lewinsky, uh, President Clinton, uh, a lawyer, got in front of uh, uh, the, the federal grand jury and argued what the term, it depends on what the word is, is. So you can understand that even small words have great meanings. All right, so going up here to how did District of Columbia get its name or how did Washington, D.C. get its name? So here we read that <clears throat> the Vatican has been involved. The Jesuit John Carroll was probably the richest man in America in the late 1700s. Carroll allowed funding to construct a DC, which is nicknamed, quote, Rome on the Potomac. In fact, Wikipedia and the Catholic Encyclopedia confirm Washington, D.C.'s original name as Rome, Maryland. Also, a branch of the Potomac River was called the Tiber, which is named after a river in Rome. This information was written in 1902 edition of the Catholic Encyclopedia on the article on John Carroll. The owner of the land used to be Francis Pope. Now we have Pope Francis, a Jesuit from Argentina, uh, who just uh, for the first time in 600 years uh, had a pope step down and he replaced him. Isn't that coincidence? And his priest was Jew Jesuit Andrew White. Like Rome, Washington, D.C. has seven hills. Uh, their names are Capitol Hill, Meridian Hill, Floral Hills, Forest Hills, Hillbrook, Hillcrest, and Knox Hill. Is this coincidence? It doesn't look like one to me. Roman Catholic John Carroll suggested that French architect Pierre Charles Leifont, the architect of D.C., a freeborn African-American named Benjamin Bank Ban Banneker, also was part of astronomy and architecture during that time. It is said that Benjamin had a role in its construction, along with Infantant. Uh, it's a fact that Roman Catholic Charles Carroll was a signer of the Declaration of Independence. The Carroll family, who were run by the Pope, plus the Jesuits of Rome, and the Freemasons were key in the American Revolution. In fact, George Washington helped in his Masonic attire, laid the cornerstone to the uh, Capitol building. John Carroll founded Georgetown University in 1789. Daniel Carroll owned land in D.C. Roman Catholic Pierre Lafont was a part of the creation of Washington, D.C. as well. Roman Catholic Constantino Bramidi was the hired painter of occult pictures in the Capitol Dome. So 
let's go over to here and this is a wonderful website that we'll get into a lot more in another time but where did the name Columbia come from and this site is called uh, US a versus US and it documents uh, how the two uh, the Republic and the democracy the corporation of civil law versus the uh, Republic that we think we live under the United States of America small letters versus the capital letters the United States of Amer America compare side by side and when most people say well uh, that's that's not legal under the Constitution we don't live under that Constitution we live on this one here on the right side so Columbia is a name for goddess of the creation, war, and destruction, more known as the goddess of death and pain. Wonderful. She is derived from the imagery of the Samarimus, wife of Nimrod, and queen of Babylon, back in the Egyptian days. The statue on the top of the Capitol building called the Statue of Freedom is actually Persephone, meaning she who destroys light. She is the queen of the underworld. She is crowned with pentacles and pentagrams and stars with five points. And over, let's go back quick over here, and you can see where here's Washington, D.C., laid out by LaFont, the Roman Catholic, in shape of the Pentagon, pentagram. Um, so it goes on to say, when someone stands on something, it is usually an indication of ownership. This is also why you, when you go into court, they say, do you understand? Do you stand under your fictitious name? Therefore, she owns the facility she stands on. Although the dome is on top of the Capitol building, was not finished until 1868. Uh, Columbia and Parsifany are seen in other statues around the world. Um, and also it goes on to say that the District of Columbia is run by Gnostic priesthoods of the undisclosed mystery Babylon under Masonic rule. Some of the Masonic symbolisms, symbolisms laid out on the district streets. Uh, the obelisk, which is also in the city state of City of London, and also an obelisk in the center of the Vatican and Rome. Again, Egyptians, they actually brought these obelisks, except for the Washington, D.C. one, over from Egypt. Um, now, going down a little further, we see that the Gnostic priesthood includes the Illuminati, Skull and Bone Society, which John Kerry and the Bushes are uh, members of, Knights of Malta, Knights of Columbus, uh, all the secret societies. And then the ones we've, you've probably heard of down here, we see the uh, secret society of Cecil Rhodes, uh, the chat that's the, the Rhodes Scholar, Chatham House Crowd, Commonwealth Nations, the Royal Institute of Inter International Affairs, the Trilateral Commission, which uh, um, is run by the Rockefellers, uh, the Bilderberg Group, the Council of Foreign Relations that the Clintons and uh, many, many presidents have belonged to, and the magistrates and bar attorneys. So you have to be a member of this group. The bar attorney, bar actually stands for British Accredited Registry and is a corporation uh, based in the city of London um, and chartered in Puerto Rico. And we'll get into that in another time. But I just want to keep on this uh, District of Columbia theme. So corporate officers, by this act, we can see um, that it was created to make a corporation, again, United States capital letters versus small capital letters over here. We can see it started with uh, old school, what we thought we had, the Declaration of Independence, Articles of Confederation, Constitution, which were taught in school. But that was changed in 1871 with the Treasonous Congress, creating Washington, D.C. We had the Gettysburg Act in 1864, declaring emergency war powers under the Reconstruction Act. So this put, put us in martial law, and some argue we've never been in martial law, out of martial law. <clears throat> in fact, and since 1933, we uh, again declared bankruptcy, and martial law was declared then. So we see a corporation with the legislature was established with all apparatus of a district government created by Legislative Act in 1871. Corporate officers. This is what you do when you have a corporation. You form corporate officers. Uh, by the uh, Act of June 11th, 1878, it provided uh, that the commissioners therein provided should be deemed and taken as officers of such corporation. The uh, United States is the District of Columbia Incorporated. The United States government is a foreign corporation with respect to a state. And here in the United States Code, Title 28, Section 3200 definitions, it states the following. Uh, small caps United States means federal corporation. So they poured over the small United States, which we all think we belong to, and made it into a federal corporation. Um, and then uh, just to hit on the point of the, the name uh, District of Columbia, uh, let's go over here. 
to uh, what the name means under entomology. Um, entomology is the root words, where, the wor where words come from originally. Now we see under Columbia, the poetic name for the United States of America is earlier, the <laughs> poetic name for the United States of America, comma, earlier for British colonies there. So they were calling it Columbia way back in the 1730s. Also the nation's female personification. Um, and then it goes on to read, the next one is Columbine. Remember Columbine School that had the shootings? Uh, this is from 1300, so this is probably the oldest root of French Columbine. Columbine are directly from medieval Latin Columbina. Um, and over here we see that it literally dove-like, from Columba meaning dove. The inverted flower supposedly resembles a cluster of five doves. Hmm, what is that about? So let's look at district. And when you say district, uh, like district of attorney, district is a member of something greater. So the district of Columbia is a member of something greater than itself. So here we see district, district is territory under jurisdiction, whose business of a lord or officer from med medieval Latin uh, districtus, retaining restraining of offenders jurisdiction. Then under the feudal system, the area of judis jurisdiction, noun use of past particle of Latin distringere means to hinder and detain, see distress. So to hinder, detain, and distress a dove. What the heck does that mean? Well, let's go back here and look at Persephone again as she sits on top of the Capitol building. And she was a goddess, queen of the underworld, wife of the god, god Hades. She was also the goddess of spring growth, who was worshipped alongside her mother, Demeter. Uh, and we go over here, back to the Roman days, since they did help name Washington, D.C. All right, so here we see the dove's symbolism in Christian faith, staying on this uh, Rome theme that apparently had a big hand in naming Washington, D.C., or uh, Little Rome. Uh, we read that the dove, as a symbol, predates Christianity standing in for Mother Goddess, uh, standing in mo for Mother Goddess in the ancient Near East and representing God's hovering spirit in the Babylonian Talmud. All right, the Babylonian Talmud refers to back in the Egyptian days. And what is the Talmud? But it is the uh, instruction learning from a root to teach or study is a central text of the rabbinic Judaism. It is also traditionally referred to as Shah's, a Hebrew abbreviation of Shisha Sederim, the six orders. I'm sure I mispronounced that. Uh, and here we go over to the Talmud, some quotes from the Talmud, which I think you'll find fairly interesting. Um, and uh, we scroll down and we read that to communicate anything to a goy, a goy is someone who is non-Jewish, rabbinic Jewish, about our religious relations would be equal to killing of all Jews, for if the Goyim knew what we teach about them, they would kill us openly. Hmm. Uh, and this one, when a Jew has a Gentile in his clutches, another Jew may go to the same Gentile, lend him money, and in turn deceive him, so that the Gentile shall be ruined. For the property of a Gentile, according to our law, belongs to no one, and for the first Jew that passes has full right to seize it. Uh, and this one, should knock your socks off. Happy will be the lost of Israel, whom the Holy One, blessed be he, is chosen amongst the Goyim, of whom the scriptures say, quote, Their work is but vanity. It is an illusion at which we must laugh. They will all perish when God visits them in his wrath, end quote. At the moment when the Holy One, blessed be he, will exterminate all the Goyim of the world, Israel alone will subsist, even as it is written. Quote, the Lord alone will appear great on that day. So what I want to bring your attention to and close with is uh, Manifest Destiny. And here we see again uh, Columbia um, and American Progress printed by 1872. And note here's uh, the stand-in for the goddess, um, Columbia, representing the dove or representing Mother Goddess, floating over the westward movement of the settlers coming across the white man uh, taking out the native indians taking out the buffaloes um, uh, american progress a painting uh, here columbia is a personification of the united states leads civilization westward with american settlers she brings the light from the east into the darkness of the west 
stringing telephone wires. She sweeps west. She holds a school book as well, not a Bible. Uh, the different stages of economic activity of the pioneers are highlighted and especially the evolving forms of transportation. And, and then finally, uh, Manifest Destiny, Wikipedia, 19th century. This painting came out, as I said, one year after the Organic Act of 1871 by the Treasonous Congress that created the Corporation of the United States, of which President Obama is head of the corporation um, that takes all our tax money and runs the show. Uh, was a widely held belief in the United States that American settlers were destined to expand throughout the continent. Widely held belief. Not by the African-American slaves, I'm sure it wasn't. Uh, the special virtues of the American people and their institutions, America's mission to redeem and remake the West in the image of an agrarian America, an irresistible destiny to accomplish this essential duty. Historian Frederick Merck says the concept was born out of, quote, a sense of mission to redeem the old world by high example, generated by the potentialities of a new earth for building a new heaven. So one could even argue that their long-term plans uh, are being implemented to create a new Jerusalem. So I'm ending here, and I'll include this wonderful website that uh, somebody anonymous created comparing the two governments, the one that was created in 1776 and the one that was usurped, uh, that in uh, 1871, uh, creating the corporation the, um, in the District of Columbia. Uh, and I'm going to close with this quote here. And it goes like this, a democracy cannot exist as a permanent form of government. It can only exist until the voters discover that they can vote themselves generous gifts from the public treasury. From that moment on, the majority always votes for the candidates promising the most benefits from the public treasury with the result that a democracy always collapses over loose fiscal policy. We're currently $18 trillion in debt, uh, always followed by a dictatorship. That's coming next. The average age of the world's greatest civilizations from the beginning of history has been about 200 years. We're right about 244 years. During those 200 years, these nations always progress through the following sequence. See if you can identify where we are. From bondage to spiritual faith, from spiritual faith to great courage, from courage to liberty, from liberty to abundance, from abundance to selfishness, from selfishness to complacency, from complacency to apathy, from apathy to dependency, and then from dependency back again to bondage. Attributed to Scottish history professor, University of Edinburgh, Sir Alexander Fraser Titler. So in closing, um, I will, uh, the next uh, video I'll do will be a little bit more at length to, to put together how our, our laws are still under Roman Latin law, how our monetary system was developed uh, by the Vatican and the Caesar days, and we're still using the same uh, monetary maritime law and uh, debt system, why debt is being created and how we're all uh, securitized debt from birth, and also how the laws were trust were originally created and um, from the Vatican put on uh, 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 child's skin when they wrote the first uh, QV trust. It'll be a little more lengthy and a little more in-depth, and a lot of it goes into the information presented uh, right here on this, uh, this is wonderful site. So thank you for listening and we'll catch you the next time and be well.